Kevin, let me just start with you. Now there's worries, big piece in the Wall Street Journal, that, that, uh, that earnings, which are we're right on the cusp of uh, when we're going to be, uh, you know, swamped. Uh, in the swamp, which is a loaded term now, but uh, that's coming. Um, is that where we need to focus our attention in terms of worrying about whether there's a recession signal there or no? Uh, I think that's right. I think uh, the U.S., there's very much uh, real concern here that uh, the economy is moderating. And last week's ISM surveys indicated that there could be some even more downside risk to the outlook uh, in the very near term. You know, Friday's jobs report was decent enough that I think uh, it at least it doesn't show that the labor market is collapsing, but it's uh, slowing right now. But the broader economy seems to be uh, slowing down, perhaps quicker than people think. Mark, we're, we haven't spoken in, in a while. I just wonder where you think we are on the, on the big picture. Still got quite a bit of negative interest rates around the world. We got repo, uh, repo issues happening here. I was wondering whether you consider that to be uh, some type of canary in, a, in the coal mine or um, what's happening? Yeah, Joe, I think the uh, we have $17 trillion in negative interest rates in the world right now. It's almost incredible. Nobody 10 years ago would have ever thought this possible, and here we are. Well, the big story, of course, has been China. What's going on is that the nations in uh, Europe, by raising taxes or selling assets, the normal ways and uh, historically that they would be able to pay for their budgets and social programs, can't afford them, so they got the ECB to print pixie dust money, money from nothing, and then they bought sovereign debt and corporate debt, and they've lowered interest rates either to very close to zero for some of the uh, southern European nations and far less than zero for a number of other nations. And so the Fed, in my opinion, has to respond to this. They are America's central bank. And they've got to stand up and, in my opinion, lower rates. I've encouraged them to lower rates, not less than zero, but slightly over zero to deal with this uh, Game of Thrones issue with the European Union. Hmm. Does that make sense to you, Kevin? Well, I think the, the big concern uh, from, from the U.S. Uh, standpoint is the uncertainty with regard to trade. I think there's a lot of downside risk. Um, I think that... You know, it's not something that we at NatWest Markets thinks is going to be resumed anytime soon. I think, you know, if you going into an election year, uh, even just removing the uncertainty with regard to trade, there's uh, possibly two very different uh, policy outcome approaches, depending upon who wins the Democratic nominee, whether it's Elizabeth Warren or, or if uh, Trump is reelected. So I think going into that, business decision makers are very unlikely to feel very inspired to re-engage in activity next year that I think the global economy is already starting to show pretty uh, clear evidence that the uh, trade uncertainty is really spill starting to spill over to the U.S. Mark, did, did you, do you think that, I, I read an article this morning about you know, Zero Hedge on, on repos, and I'm not sure I buy it, but uh, I mean, if there's something I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. Does this turn into anything, or, or what do you think? No? No, I don't think so, Joe. I think this is, has to do with short-term funding, with the auctions, with the demand for the dollar for a variety of reasons. And I think the Fed uh, is more than capable of uh, dealing with by its repo activity. And no, I don't think there's going to be any fire, Joe. Hmm. We should learn a little bit more about it um, this week, as you mentioned at the top. <clears throat> we'll get the minutes from the September FOMC meeting. And um, I think the Fed is going to be pretty clear in that they're trying to address any sort of stress and funding levels, um, but that it's very much a technical aspect of their balance sheet unwind. Um, they're kind of going in the dark here with this new ample reserve uh, regime that they're following. And they're kind of feeling their way along, trying to uh, hit the right level of reserves. Uh, but I, I think that they'll make pretty clear, and, and Powell has kind of emphasized this at the September meeting, the press conference, that it's certainly something that they're going to try to address, uh, but it's clearly not a monetary policy issue that they're going to try to safe engage in in QE anytime soon, um, that they are very much uh, focused on the on this being a technical issue and not something related to monetary policy.
But I do think that the, there is a lot of concern. And last week's ISM reports, I think, highlight downside risk to the economy, that the Fed is going to keep their foot on the pedal. Uh, I think that they're, they're in this for the longer term than even that they are leading on to, um, that they're going to have to ease rates later again this month. Uh, they're probably going to have to continue with that sort of uh, policy approach further than what they think. I mean, up until now, they've uh, categorized this as a mid-cycle adjustment uh, and taking out some insurance. Clearly, the, the economy is not collapsing, by, witnessed at least by the labor market data. But there are downside risks that we think the economy is going to continue to uh, struggle here.